In this week's Faith at Home episode, we're going to make the link between feeling compassion and God's love for the world. We will highlight ways that we are suggesting parents and carers can make those links when discussing faith at home. We'll also hear how a principle like compassion can be a helpful point of contact, a shared value between churches and schools. But we'll start, as we often do, by hearing what compassion means for some young people. I think compassion means like caring for others. Putting other people before yourself. Not just thinking about your own problems, but others as well. It's basically just another word for empathy. It's putting yourself in someone's shoes whenever you've had an accident. I think what compassion means to me is to be able to help someone when they need help. Compassion is what caring to reach friend or family and you would help with the struggling. It means helping other people to show love. Passion literally means to share, com, the suffering, passion of others. Compassion is a gift. It's the Spirit of God speaking to our spirit, nudging us in the ribs to act. There are many signs that talking about the centrality of compassion to our faith is a positive point of engagement for young people. Stephen Cottrell, the 98th Archbishop of York, recently found this out when he agreed to be interviewed by some young people from the Archbishop of York Youth Trust. What I'd like to know is what does Jesus say about compassion in the Bible? Well, actually, Jesus doesn't say a lot about compassion in the Bible. What Jesus does is show us what compassion looks like um, through his own actions of compassion, but also through the stories he tells. I guess perhaps the most famous example is the well-known story of the prodigal son, where when the prodigal son returns, the father had compassion on him. So even though that younger son had really let himself down, let his dad down, uh, the father runs out to meet him. What I'd like to know is, what does compassion mean to you? I think compassion means to me getting inside somebody else's shoes, um, trying to see and understand the world from their perspective, and that way you can be of the most help and service to them. And my question is, given all the turmoil in the world, what are you hoping for right now? I think what I'm hoping for more than anything is that when we get through this coronavirus pandemic, we won't go back to normal. I don't want to hear those words, let's get back to normal. Because the truth is, what we thought of as normal, well, was killing the planet. Um, and, and although I cry out for the terrible suffering we see in our world today, um, actually this does give us an opportunity to think much more carefully and intentionally about what sort of world we want to build and what sort of world we want to inhabit. And actually the whole planet has had a bit of a breather while our cars have been on the drive and the aeroplanes have been on the runway. And to go back to normal, um, I think would be, would be a terrible disaster. Young people face a lot of pressures growing up. The Archbishop of York Youth Trust, like many Christian youth work charities, has found creative and positive ways to engage with young people's interests and passions. This is something we believe that all churches can undertake, especially through partnerships with schools. Here's Father Joseph Fernandez with an account of how working with a local sixth form enabled him to see and partner with compassionate young people in his area. Young people can show great compassion um, towards um, local communities, particularly when it's something that really captures their imagination, something that really captures their heart, something that really appeals to them, that speaks to them, something fairly greedy. I recently um, read a um, group of six formers in the secondary school, in the local secondary school, um, share with them about um, ministry with a local women's prison. And I noticed that was actually when I mentioned that uh, some of the women there, in fact, themselves 
uh, are also victims. And I could see really by their questions and the way they were engaging, um, but really there was something there that um, they really wanted to find out more and get involved. And so they did. And actually ever since, um, we've been looking with a school of ways of them actually being directly involved uh, with the prison as well, but they've been incredibly compassionate and non-judgmental, above all non-judgmental, um, in the way that they actually now can really just look at uh, the women in the prison, really not as offenders, but actually as human beings, with the story as well and the past. And the six formers at this school have been absolutely amazing and compassionate, and I'm really proud of them. Thank you, Joseph, for those insights. Drawing on the compassion that children and young people already display is an important starting point in shaping the prophetic actions that resonate with our faith. Although it's also important to root that in what the Bible says. In our video for parents and carers this week, Raheel and Rachel explore how to do this at home using story and scribbling. The Bible is one of the best resources for talking about life of faith with our family. The stories Jesus told have characters without too many details or backstory. Which means that we can imagine ourselves being part of the story. The obvious story when it comes to compassion is the story of the Good Samaritan. A traveler is attacked and left for dead. But there is hope. A priest comes along, followed by a temple official. Both of whom saw the traveler and passed by on the other side. The impact of the story comes if you know that the crowd around Jesus thought of the Samaritans as the enemy. There would have been an audible gasp as Jesus introduced this character and turned him into the hero of the story. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. Where do you feel you would be in this story? Choosing to act when we feel compassion for something that's not right is how each of us can bring God's love into this world. Parents and carers have this amazing opportunity to model what this looks like for children and family members. Here are some more examples from parents about their experiences of using the Bible with their families. One way our faith has grown during this period is by spending time together as a family and being thankful for all the good things God's given us, like thanking Him for all the beautiful nature we see around us when we're out on our bikes and scooters. One way we've been talking about faith is through doing virtual Sunday school and lots of different crafts, including colouring in little cards with Bible verses, um, and then we've been able to send these to our friends. I do feel that when we have the chat map here, it gives us something to really focus on, a uh, discussion that we can have amongst ourselves. I usually read the story to my family and I like listening to their opinions. I'm interested in the children's opinions. I quite enjoy giving my own as well. And I feel that everybody gets something out of it, even if it is just a bit of relaxation and doing the colouring. I'm normally the one who colours in. I find it quite relaxing as people are talking. I like guessing the story before my brothers read it, colouring it in and doing the puzzles. You can find links to the Bible chat maps on the Faith at Home website. Why not send these to some of the families and households in your church? 
or use them as a different way of engaging with a Bible story in a service. Through prayer, through quiet reflection, through a song or an image, people get the sense of what God is calling us to do. We often need the younger generation to help us see what's possible when we're too cynical to think anything can be done. Allowing young people to question our compassion. Enabling young people to lead us in showing compassion. Listening to young people teach us compassion. That's faith at home. The artist has put many signs of God's compassion into this icon of St Paul. If I look at the right hand, I can see that it's raised in blessing towards me. If I look at the left hand, I can see that it's holding the Bible, and, on top of that, St Paul's Cathedral. The Bible is red, signifying the love of God, and the blood his only son shed to take away our sin. On St Paul's shoulder sits an extinct Huya bird. One trait this bird had that I like is a very strong bond with its mate. Overhead is a green banner. Green represents renewal, peace and justice. On the banner is the life cycle of a plant. A bud, some leaves and some flowers. Perhaps this is indicating the life of our saviour. I wonder whether you can find any other symbols of God's everlasting compassion in this icon. <laughs>